All right, today I want to talk about reduction and oxidation of atoms in compounds during chemical reactions. What I need you to remember for this entire video is OIL RIG. This is a little acronym that's going to help you remember the difference between reduction and oxidation. Other teachers have other acronyms. I use this one because it clearly tells you that oxidation is a loss of electrons and reduction is a gain of electrons. Now remember, electrons have a negative charge. So if something's losing electrons, the charge is becoming positive. See, subtracting a negative. If you're gaining negative charges, your charge is going to get more and more negative. Now, there's an official way to assign a charge to each of the atoms in a compound, and that's something called oxidation numbers. Feel free to take a look at that video, but you can also do this in a more ghetto way by just assuming that each of the atoms is going to have the charge that you would expect it to have. Take a look at this. In this particular chemical reaction, what's the charge on copper? Well, there is no charge. And actually, the oxidation number of copper here is zero. I'm going to write a little zero underneath of it just to remind myself. Here, I've got two bromine atoms. What's the total charge on this molecule? Well, there isn't one. And I would expect the two bromines to be about the same. It's a covalent bond between the two. I would expect each of the bromines here also to not have a charge. In this compound, though, I've got my copper bonded to two bromines. Now, when copper and bromine are in a chemical like this, it's called an ionic compound. The copper, in this case, wants to have a charge of plus two, and each of the bromines wants to have a charge of minus one. Notice I have two atoms that have a charge of minus one, one atom that has a charge of plus two, and so the charges eventually cancel each other out. Another way to think about this is that the ions that make up this ionic compound are the copper two ion and bromide ions, which have charges of minus one. Anyways, here's my point. The copper atoms went from a charge of zero to a charge of plus two. So, if you go from a charge of zero to plus two, what happens to your electrons? Electrons have a negative charge. This guy lost two negative charges. He lost two electrons. A loss of electrons? Uh, let me take a look here. It says here oxidation is a loss of electrons. So the Cu has been oxidized. Huh? That's how you can tell. The Br had a charge of zero and the charge changed to minus one. That got more negative. Each of the bromines gained one electron. A gain, well I do believe that reduction is a gain of electrons. So the copper was oxidized and the bromine was reduced. Check. One thing that I do want to point out is that if this was oxidized, what caused that oxidation? We say that the thing that caused it to oxidize, in this case the only other reactant that could have caused it, we call that thing the oxidizing agent. It causes the other atom to be oxidized. Now, it doesn't have to be a particular atom. It could be a compound. But the reactant that is reduced is usually the oxidizing agent. And the atom that was oxidized caused a reduction to happen. 
and it's called the reducing agent. Just throwing that out there. We can do the exact same process here and I'm going to do it quickly to show you how quickly I want you to be able to do it. Ionic compound between copper and sulfide. Sulfide usually wants a charge of minus two. Look it up. Copper then wants a charge of plus two so that they cancel out and you make a neutral compound between the two. Hydrogen, two hydrogen atoms connected together with no charge total. Well, that's a covalent bond. They probably both have a charge of zero. Here, copper atom, no charge, charge is zero. Here, ah, polar covalent compound. We've got hydrogen connected to sulfide. Well, sulfide is a charge of minus two and each of the hydrogens could want to charge a plus one. That story checks out too, valence-wise. So, which chemicals here had a change in charge or oxidation number? Well, I see that Cu went from a charge of plus two to a charge of zero. That seems like it's getting more negative. In order to go from plus two to zero, it had to gain two electrons. Gain means that's the thing that was reduced. What else changed here? It looks like hydrogen went from a charge of zero up to a charge of plus one. To get more positive, you had to lose one electron. And in that case, a loss of electrons? Well, that's an oxidation. So, the copper was reduced and the hydrogen was oxidized. Notice the sulfide or sulfur atoms, that charge didn't change. The oxidation number didn't change there. It wasn't reduced or oxidized, but it was still there. Best of luck in assigning oxidations and reductions to your chemical reactions.